Okay, now this is where it gets fun or difficult. <laughs> uh, depends on how you how you want to look at it. But now we're going to add the gravi gravitational lensing effect, and this is going to model how light bends and warps around a supermassive object in space. And before I start, this isn't my math. Uh, I got this math from somebody much much smarter than me who studied this kind of thing a lot. And the math is friendly for computer graphics, uh, for the kind of variables that we actually have access to already. So I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up Photoshop here. Now, if you remember, we just did this. The line is going straight and it's checking to see if it's in the black hole or not. But when we're doing relativistic effects, we have to assume that light doesn't travel in a straight line. It curves. So we need that shape to kind of look like this. So if there's a ray shot out over here, it curves around the black hole like an orbit almost and then escapes out this way or if it's you know closer to being pointed at the black hole it can it can get sucked in or cross the event horizon and we'll never see what the light looks like ever so we need a couple of variables in order to do that we need the ray position and the ray direction which we already have but we also need to calculate a couple other ones we need the vector from the black hole's center position to the current position. And the blue line here, our turquoise line, represents the distance from the ray position to the black hole, which is essentially just you know the length of ray position. And then I have this 2m here. So 2m, uh, you know, m is our mass, and the event horizon is always equal to two times the mass of the black hole. Now, physically, that's not entirely true. That that formula is the Schwarzschild radius formula, and that's like a little more complicated, but we can simplify the hell out of all of this if we make a couple of assumptions. Assumption one, we are assuming that light is traveling. The speed of light in our case is just going to be one. So that's why every step is just equal to one, because that's what we're assuming the speed of light is. And the mass of the black hole is, um, or to calculate the Schwarzschild radius, it's kind of like an involved formula, but we can essentially just wipe out a lot of the, the, the symbols that we need and just kind of like assume that that's going to evaluate to just whatever the value of m is or mass. And that's kind of what we're doing here. And it's all just going to work out fine. Have to trust me on this but let's kind of get into like what the math formula is and this is going to probably blow up the screen here but i'll uncheck this and this is kind of what we want so right now we're assuming that, that p is equal to the a position of our ray and r is equal to the direction the ray is traveling and we want to calculate what this this white point is and this is going to be the position that we want to move our ray to as it as it bends and that's going to be, uh, you know, this value here is going to, uh, or the difference between these two values is going to be this, this value called f here. So this white point is going to be equal to f plus the ray direction plus the ray position. And that's what we want to calculate. So how do we calculate f? Well, f is equal to negative three times m, and this is just our mass, divided by the distance squared times uh, this uh, function here called x, which is essentially a, like a cross product, but it's it's a cross squared. So we have that formula down here. And once we have that, we just multiply that by v. So it's the distance squared times the cross squared of the of this v vector that points from the singularity to p and r, which is the ray vector, multiplied by V again. So that's what we need to calculate in order to get this position and update our stepper. And this is what that function looks like. It's a cross product, but 
the before we add all the terms together, we have to square the result of the component multiplies and then the subtraction. So a regular cross product looks just like this, except it doesn't have it doesn't have these uh, these squares there. So let's go ahead and encode this up. We're going to need to implement a custom cross squared function, and then we're going to have to implement this function right here. So let's go ahead and pop up our code window here. The first function that we're going to implement is going to be the cross two function, and that is going to return a float value. So I'll say cross two, and it's going to take a vector going in, two vectors going in actually. So I'm just going to call those A and B. And we're just going to make this one line of code. So we're going to say return. I don't need those parentheses, but I'm going to say pal a dot y times b dot z minus b dot y times a dot z. And then I'll have a comma here. And I'm going to add 2.0. So this is going to multiply the y component of a by the b of the z component of b, and then it's going to multiply the b the y component of b and the z component of a, and then it's going to subtract those two. So it might be a little bit more readable if you put these in parentheses like this. Maybe eliminate the spaces here. And then the result of this, we're going to square. So that's what the power function does. It raises it to uh, whatever the value of, of, of this variable is. So we're just raising that to the second power. And we're going to do that two more times. So pow. And we're going to say this time a dot z times b dot x minus, actually we'll close that in parentheses again for readability. minus a dot x times b dot z. I'll raise that to the power of 2. And we'll add our last term here, a dot x times b dot y minus a dot y times b dot x. And we'll raise that to the second power. Make sure we add our semicolon there. And now we need to add our function that's going to give us our little force vector that we're going to add to our uh, particle position. And I'm going to, this is going to be a float three. I'm going to call this gravity force. And I'm going to say float three, we need a rate position. We need rate direction. And I'm going to pass over the black hole properties because we're also going to need the mass of our black hole. So we are going to say ray direction equals normalize ray dir. So this is just kind of like a safety uh, ray direction. Uh, can come in here and it might it might be something that's not normalized. So by that I mean its magnitude is not equal to one. So normalizing this when it comes in is just kind of like a safety check because we need to make sure that this ray direction is actually normalized. And then we need a float value. I'm going to call this distance to singularity. And this is going to be this D value right here distance from the singularity to the current point position. And this is just going to be equal to length of ray position. And then I'm going to have another float here called squared distance. And I'm just going to set this equal to distance to singularity times self. And you can also write this by like this. You can say power 
distance to singularity 2.0 if you want to. It's the same thing. All right, and now we need to calculate the vector from the singularity to the ray position. So this is going to be a float three, and we're going to say singularity to position, and that's going to be equal to the normalized value of the ray position. So if you remember, this one is the yellow, the yellow vector like this, and that's normalized so that its magnitude is equal to one. So we've got the position in here. We've got the, 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 the ray's uh, direction, which is this ray dir value. We've got this v value, or the, the vector from the singularity to the position that we calculated here. And we have the square distance that we use to first calculate the length of the ray position. And then we just multiply that by itself to get the square distance. So we should have everything that we need, including our cross two function, to just return the value of f. So, we're going to say return, and I'm just going to kind of wrap that function up in this one line of code. I'm going to say negative 3, 3 dot 0 multiplied by bhp dot mass multiplied, or sorry, this is actually going to be divided by the square distance times cross 2 singularity to position and the ray direction. So we're cross squaring the singularity to position and the ray direction. And then we're going to multiply that by singularity to position. And that's it. That is our gravity force function. That should give us our relativistic bending. And all we need to do is step the ray. So and we can update this by just saying ray position plus equals the ray direction plus gravity force. And we'll go ahead and plug our arguments in there, which are going to be the ray position, the ray direction, and our black hole parameters struct. Now this is going to result in a curved line, but so what we're going to need to do is also update the ray direction because earlier we were just assuming that it was always going to be what equal to the camera vector. So we have to say, uh, you know, first I'm going to make a float three here. Actually, we'll make it up here. I'm going to call this previous position, and I'm just going to leave that blank for now. And down here, we'll actually give it a value. We'll say previous position is equal to the ray, ray position. So kind of like storing it so we can access it later. And then I'm going to say the, the new ray direction is going to be equal to the normalized uh, results of the ray position minus previous position. Now, a little trick for you guys. Uh, if you don't understand how I updated that direction, uh, let's come back into Photoshop really here so I can just quickly visualize this. Just do it up here. If you have two points in space, call this B and we'll call this A, and you need to get the direction from one point to another direction, you just subtract the two. So if I if I want to get the direction from A to B, you remember the, the, the direction you want the arrow or the, the vector to point, that point always comes first. So you say B, uh, B minus A. That's it. That'll give you this direction. Now, if you normalize it, you guarantee that vector is always going to have some unit length of one. 
So if you don't normalize it, it's, the magnitude is going to be a lot greater, and that's going to screw up our math. So that's why I am normalizing it. All right. So let's go ahead and save this. And I don't think we're going to actually need to do anything in our fragment shader since all of our changes happen here. So let's go, let's go back to Unreal and, um, oops, let's go back to Unreal and see if this works. So we'll click on our black hole here and just hit enter. And we have an error. And this, again, this is why we do it in that function, the shader function, is it's giving us an exact place where the error is. It makes it really easy to debug. So we've got a little error here. So let's go back here. It looks like it's line 32, it's saying. So I think I spare, spelled square distance wrong. So fix that, save, come back in here, do this. And let's see if this is working. So it doesn't look like it is. And the reason that's, that's true is because we actually have to output an updated direction vector. So at the end of this loop, we want to output ray dir as the direction value. So I'm just going to say dir equals ray dir here. And I'm going to save that and let's see here. There we go. We have our lensing effect. Looks pretty wild. Let's do something really quick. Um, first, let's get rid of this viewport so you can see everything. And let's go into our textures. And I'm going to grab this Milky Way Q map and I'm going to plug that in in place of our grid. Yeah, check that out. So again, the camera has to be pretty close or else we run out of steps and the black hole kind of disappears. Yeah, but now we're cooking. <laughs> 